Hello everyone, welcome to the Well of Curiosity and to Natural Disasters 101, where we look at the raw power our planet can unleash. We're going to kick things off with a personal favourite of mine, volcanoes. A volcano is an opening in the Earth's crust, where magma, a mixture of red-hot molten rock, mineral crystals, solid rock fragments and dissolved gases, from inside the planet erupts onto the surface, where it is then known as lava. This magma is produced by the melting of rock in the Earth's upper mantle and lower crust. It is often less dense than the surrounding rock because it is much hotter, causing the matter to expand and move upwards through weaknesses and fractures in the crust. This magma often collects in large cavities called magma chambers. From these it rises through channels called conduits until it reaches the surface on land or on the ocean floor. Repeated eruptions in the same location can lead to an accumulation of volcanic material creating a volcano. Volcanoes are heavily concentrated in a few areas of the world, mainly close to tectonic plate boundaries. In some places, the plates are moving away from each other, splitting apart to allow fresh magma to well up from below to form volcanoes. At other boundaries, one slab of rock is forced beneath the other in a process called subduction. Water and other volatile substances from the sinking rock escapes into the mantle, lowering the melting point of the rock and allowing the formation of large quantities of magma. This magma can then rise up to form volcanoes in the region above. This process is happening around the edges of the Pacific Ocean. The large numbers of active volcanoes here has led to the nickname the Ring of Fire. Some volcanoes form away from plate boundaries altogether. These areas receive unusually high amounts of magma and have been named hotspots. The exact cause and nature of hotspots is still debated, although the leading theory proposes that they result from narrow flows of hot, semi-fluid rock called mantle plumes that rise up from near the Earth's core to particular spots beneath the crust. Some examples of hotspots include Eastern Africa, Hawaii and Yellowstone National Park in the United States. Volcanoes can take many different forms. The most familiar type is the large, steep-sided cone called a stratovolcano, which is composed of layers of erupted volcanic products. The true giants of the volcano world, though, are the shields. Shaped like broad, upturned shields, they are made of layer after layer of runny lava that has flowed over the surface and solidified. Both of these types can be adorned with small mounds of loose volcanic fragments called cinder cones, which are created as fissures open up on the flanks of the larger volcano. Some volcanoes can collapse after a particularly violent eruption, leaving a wide, deep crater behind known as a caldera. Many calderas are filled with water to create lakes, and some are even partially submerged. If the rising magma comes into contact with groundwater or permafrost, it can create sudden explosions. This can result in the formation of shallow, bowl-shaped craters sunk into the ground called mars, or cones of consolidated ash called tuff. Volcanic eruptions fall into two broad categories. Effusive eruptions result in fairly gentle, quiet outpourings of lava onto the surface. The lava is often quite runny and contains little gas. However, if the magma is a lot thicker and contains more gas, or if the path of the magma is blocked, then pressure can build up beneath the ground to be suddenly released to create a more violent eruption known as explosive. Explosive eruptions cause the magma to fragment and be expelled upwards to create a large plume of rock, ash, gas and dust. The strength of volcanic eruptions is measured on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, the VEI. The scale goes from 0, the least powerful, to 8, the most powerful, and is based on the height of the erupted plume and volume of material that is expelled.
One of the major products of a volcanic eruption is, of course, the lava. This molten rock can have a temperature between 700 and 1200 degrees Celsius. Although thicker and stickier than water, lava will flow over the ground under the influence of gravity, as long as its temperature remains high enough before eventually cooling to form solid rock. There are several different types of lava based on temperature and composition. The hottest lavas are called basaltic, which comes in two main forms. Bahoehoe advances as a series of lobes. As its surface cools, it develops a thin, pliable skin under which hot material continues to stream. As it cools, it forms a smooth, rope-like texture. Aa is slightly cooler, with rough, fragmented surfaces and the potential to move very rapidly. The more explosive eruptions launch plumes of gases and particles of solid material, known as tephra, into the air. This tephra ranges in size from tiny particles of ash less than 2mm in diameter, to boulder-sized blocks called lava bombs that can be solid on the outside but still hot and molten in the middle. Depending on the power of the eruption and other factors such as wind speed and direction, volcanic tephra has the potential to travel up to thousands of kilometres from the volcano itself. One of the most dangerous phenomena associated with an eruption is the pyroclastic flow. These fast-moving, ground-hugging mixtures of hot ash, rock and gas often result from the collapse of an eruption plume to then barrel their way down the side of a volcano. Most travel for 5 to 10 kilometres, moving at over 100 kilometres an hour, and will flatten, burn and bury everything they encounter. Those that contain more gas and less solid material are known as pyroclastic surges, which are more turbulent and often travel much faster than their more dense cousins. It is worth noting that if volcanic material mixes with large amounts of water, you can get a whole new type of natural disaster, but that will have to wait for its own separate video. Many of the world's most dangerous volcanoes are monitored scientifically. Although volcanologists cannot predict exactly when or how a volcano will erupt, they can warn of an increased risk of an eruption using a variety of different methods and tools. For example, volcanologists will analyse the gases emitted by a volcano, use seismometers to detect tremors in the ground, and employ instruments called tilt meters to measure any bulging on the flanks. An increase in gas emission, earthquake frequency and intensity, and bulging of the ground can all indicate that magma is welling up and that an eruption is imminent. Once scientists have thoroughly studied a volcano, they can produce a hazard map. This can be used to show the major danger zones, for example the most likely routes of future lava flows. When the risk of an eruption is high, people can be advised to move away from these danger zones or even evacuate the area completely. Now that we have had an overview of volcanoes, let's look at a particular example of an eruption. Mount Merapi is a large stratovolcano on the island of Java, Indonesia. It is Indonesia's most active volcano and lies in one of the world's most densely populated areas. The eruption of Merapi in late 2010 ranks as one of the most serious volcanic eruptions of the 21st century so far. Towards late October 2010, a sharp increase in earthquakes and bulging of the volcano was detected. The order to evacuate was given, but unfortunately many people did not comply, remaining in their homes. In the days that followed, Merapi produced a series of earthquakes, explosions, ash plumes, incandescent lava avalanches, fireballs, mud flows and pyroclastic flows that killed more than 300 people and displaced a further 350,000 people from their homes. The eruption devastated the surrounding region, blanketing forests, farms and plantations in a thick layer of volcanic ash. 
The ash plumes were so enormous that they caused major disruption to air traffic across the whole of Java. Hopefully this video has been useful in giving a little insight into the power of volcanoes. We will continue to explore the natural disasters that our Earth can unleash, but for now, stay curious and I'll see you next time.